Hey guys, my name is Chris. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me. What you see above my head on that wall is an organized, finally, an overhead storage solution that I've been meaning to do for a very long time. Now, it's not the most attractive thing because it's real world storage. We all have stuff, right? And we all need to put it somewhere where we can just get to it later. <laughs> no, just kidding. Absolutely, I'm gonna go through that eventually, but I had to get it up off the floor it was over in the corner of the shop. It was unsightly and I never showed you guys that corner of the shop in videos because I was embarrassed. So here's the solution I came up with. And if you stick to the end of the video, I've got a sneak peek on why I'm getting a bit more organized. So stay tuned for that. Until then, let me show you how you can batch these out in about a day. Of course, using plywood. Let's go. Before we get all into this project here, I just want to give a quick little disclaimer. Um, there is a timestamp right here. You can fast forward to that time if you want to just get right into this build. Uh, most of you really appreciate the family aspect that I have here on this channel. Uh, but for those of you that don't, and that's okay, if you want to just see what I'm making, go there. Because in the beginning of this video, my daughter and I are spending some time together and we made something. <laughs> pretty interesting, but it's a little longer segment than say a normal video for me. So if you wanna check it out, absolutely, I love it. But if you don't, I wanna respect that. There's the time you go to, to see the project. All right, thanks. So, okay. So you want, what do you want? You want a giraffe? Do you want a giraffe? Yeah. I thought you said Paco. Paco. Let's make a giraffe. No, Paco. What, what kind of animal is Paco? Yes. Is Paco a duck? Yes. He's a duck. And he has a long, he has a long beak. Okay, okay, tied up, okay. I got it, ready? Bye bye. Hey, hey, bye. <laughs> okay, what am I doing? All right, come here, come here. Show me where. He's awesome. What do you think? Say that again. Hi. Hi. What, is, what does Pato have? An, an green hat. And? Orange beak. And? Orange legs. That's right. Good job. And finally. And finally. A, a green hat. And a green hat. I'm so proud of you. Okay, so I've got the five extra cleats already up there and then the 16 inch shelves here. Now I could just essentially take another piece at 90 degrees and maybe a couple pieces on the sides and install them that way like I did those smaller shelves. However, that's a lot of plywood. And in order to not waste so much plywood, I think we're gonna cut them into strips and make various frames to go around these, which should be plenty strong and also allow materials to go between each shelf without having a barricade in between them. So if all goes according to plan, it should work. So let's do that now. 
So I hope that made sense, and I'm gonna explain it just a bit more here. I'm cutting down some three inch wide strips out of three quarter inch Baltic birch. These are gonna be used to cut into pieces that are gonna make frames put together with glue and pocket screws that are gonna represent the left, right, and back of these modular overhead storage units. So as you can see here, I've gotta cut the actual base to size, but first, now, I'm not typically one to batch things out, make a prototype and then batch things out. I typically just start building. But in this instance, I had to. Uh, I wanted to make sure this would work. This is basically a shelf you've seen by the thumbnail. Uh, it's gonna be a section of five different shelves that are gonna be hanging on a French cleat to deal with this right here, okay? This section of the shop, I don't show you very often. Reason being is because, well, it's a little embarrassing. There are things I'm going to get to, but I want them out of the way because I'm expecting a delivery very soon of a new tool. Uh, more on that later, so stay tuned. Um, you know, I guess, what, what would I call these? I would call these maybe, I'll get to it later shelves. Any shelf you need to access with a ladder, maybe typically for holidays, seasonal storage, I get it. Or in terms of us makers, well, we'll just get to it later. So that's what I'm calling these. And uh, I'm gonna build the other four right now. So I don't use pocket holes very often, but when I do, I definitely turn to this Armor Tool dual action pocket hole jig. That dual action clamp that you see it work there, it really does take all the guesswork out of how deep you need to set the collar for the drill bit. And it makes this process a breeze, hooking it up to dust collection as well. And it's virtually dust free. So I'm gonna link Armor down below. This isn't a sponsored video, but I'm relying heavily on a lot of stuff they sent me over the years. These clamps that give you vertical and horizontal support are gonna be used in tandem to put these frames together and it's gonna make it a breeze. Also, you can see all those dog holes in the Maple Top Armor tool bench. That thing is something I use probably every time I come out to the shop. So they're gonna be linked down below. Definitely give them a look. You won't regret it. Do you like the, the rectangle? It's too heavy? Well, use, oh, here, use both hands. I'll take this. Okay. Use both hands and put it on the saw. Come on, put it on the saw. You can do it. All right. Nice job, sweetie. Give me that high five. Let me hold the pato. Okay, you want to hold this? Go ahead. Thanks for your help. You know, I really love those moments. Those are so cool. Anyway, I want to give you a quick tip as well. The downward force clamps that I was using in the previous clip are not necessarily necessary in this application. You can simply put pieces together, attach the horizontal clamps like you see there, and that's going to be enough pressure to go ahead and do the deed of screwing those screws in. Just wanted to give you that tip. You don't need to take that step when doing pocket holes, and it might save you some time. All right, moving forward. We're going to take this piece. But these are the long partitions that are going to be the backs of all of these different shelves and this process goes pretty quickly as well. As I slide the piece down, clamping everything in place, I got the middle support and the two ends and those are done. Now, with the side supports done, I'm gonna take some time and just sand all the edges, making everything nice and smooth. I've preached about this before, but even though it is plywood and even though it is shop furniture, it's a pretty cool shot. You wanna get things as close to being polished as possible. Sand them down, make them nice. Here's the example. One of these on the right, is these are the cleats one on the right is right off the saw the one on the left has been hand sanded for about maybe 15 seconds with 180 grit you can see the difference and also you don't have little bits and pieces to contend with which may or may not get in the way when you're doing some assembly so i like to take that extra time and just sand everything down it really does mean a lot to me okay so time to put this together and this shelf well I'm not gonna lie to you guys. This is the fifth one I'm gonna do. I've already done four, <laughs> but I'm gonna show you how I'm doing it. So I'm using regular glue and CA glue, and I really love this combination because the CA glue and activator act as a clamp, while the regular glue, really after about an hour or so, is, is what's holding it all together. I'm gonna use some screws, of course, for reinforcement and a nail gun. You don't have to use all this stuff. You can basically put this thing together really with glue and screws if you want to. But if you're interested, like I always say, I've got a coupon code for this. Uh, this stuff is awesome. This CA glue, the uh, medium thick variety from Starbond. Check the description down below, say 15% with my code glimpse15. And I've had a lot of people use this code and use this stuff and swear by it now that it is a tool in their shop more so than a glue. So let's assemble this thing, get right to it, and uh, put some things on the wall. Let's go. All right, the first step in assembly is we're gonna put the support pieces down on the left and right sides. 
I've got a small little spacer block here I'm using made out of three quarter inch plywood. And the actual support piece is three quarter inch plywood as well. A couple ways you can do this, of course. Showing you various options, glue and brad nails. And of course you angle left and right, 10 degrees either way to give you a nice strong hold. Or you can use the CA glue and regular glue option. Put the CA glue in the various three little spots and then put your regular glue where you did not put your CA glue. Put some activator down as you squeeze it through and then you're good to go. Is it stronghold? Well, there's your example. I think so. So now it's time to assemble this thing and we're gonna use some glue and some screws to do so. But first, as I join it there at 90 degrees, I'm gonna tack it in place with some brads and then I'm gonna come back and use the little shop hack. I'm using these low profile headed screws. I'm gonna hammer them in place instead of pre-drilling, which they don't need to be pre-drilled. However, it is kind of precarious to hold the screw and the gun at the same time, especially if you're gonna screw it down on a piece that's not clamped down like this is. Just hammer them in place and you'll be good to go. So after applying some glue to the shelf support, it's now time to install the shelf. We're gonna install this with some brads, tacking it in place as well. If we've cut everything just right, everything should fit just nicely like you see here. But then I'm really gonna drive it home and make this thing solid as a rock using these screws as well. These are two inch screws. And as you see, they're gonna go all around this piece, both sides and the back as well. So one of the final steps in this is to add the front support piece. You definitely don't want to forget this because the plywood will sag just a little bit under some pretty heavy weight. However, this worked really well. This piece of three quarter inch ply at the front was definitely a necessity. Here's some more of this CA glue, regular glue trick. You put a little CA glue down, you put some activator where you got it there. These are the bottom supports for the cleats that are gonna go at the top. And now I'm gonna show you a technique that I've used that people have questions about. I use some CA glue here without activator at first. I have it near the edge, so when I have time to kind of place it where I need it, it doesn't cure right away. So I then place it exactly where I want. I spray the activator on the outside, which catches the CA glue that's barely come out the outside. And now that tacks into place really nicely to give me ample time to go ahead and drive some screws in. They really give it some strength. And that's it, guys. This is this project complete. I'm going to install this piece. And honestly, they almost look like little seats to me or some bleachers or grandstands. Either way, I'm gonna show you an opportunity that may, I may do in the future, and here you go. You know, under further inspection, it looks like I might be underutilizing the underneath of this, okay? So what I mean by that is that underneath, well, you could probably put another small shelf for storage, but what really has piqued my interest is putting under cabinet lights up there. I'm not sure how difficult that would be, but that's definitely an idea, something I'm not gonna rule out for the future. Um, all that being said, these are up. It's time to get more organized up there, get some of this stuff up off the floor and up onto these. So let's do that now and then we'll wrap this whole project up. Let's go. So here's a quick shot of the shelves without anything on them at first. I really like how these turned out. And plus they could also come down below. They could be shelves at a lower level. And honestly, here is a shot of some real world stuff up there. Some moving blankets, a couple, you know, Sterilite bins, even a Master Chief helmet. And I love how this turned out. Well, I hope you enjoyed this one. This was something that was a very much needed addition to the shop. And the coolest part of any of these French cleat things is that they're modular. You can move these things around. Heck, if I wanted to put them down at ground level, I think you could even have benches for kids. Why not? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Actually, these have worked really well and I'm really glad to get them done. I hope you guys got some value out of it. Again, my name's Chris. Thank you so much for being here. And of course, I always invite you to subscribe to the channel if you like what you see. And uh, I really appreciate you guys commenting as well. Hook me up down below. Let's get this conversation started on what you've come up with to organize your space, whether it's inside, outside, in the shop, doesn't matter. Love to hear from you. Talk to you guys soon. Until then, have a great day. So those of you that are here to the end, I told you I'd give you a little bit of a sneak peek of what's going on. I had to move some things around because I got this massive crate. This thing weighs about a thousand pounds. And some of you already have seen my Instagram story, so you know what this is. But if you don't follow me there, definitely, I'm gonna put a link down below. Check me out on Instagram, you get kind of a sneak peek of what's going on around here. And uh, this is one of those things that's gonna be a game changer for me in this shop. And um, not gonna reveal it to you just yet. I can just kind of tell you that it's definitely gonna be some type of digital fabrication. 
that we're definitely gonna use in the shop. And I can't wait to get this unwrapped and working. Thanks for joining me, guys.